Hello, everybody. I'm Marlene Yanez, and this is Sips of Science, episode number 12. And today, I have the honor of having here with me uh, Dr. Florian Congoli again. Hello, Dr. Florian. How are you? Hello. Hello, Mario. How are you? I also here have with me Professor uh, Mark Hostemeyer. Hello, Professor. How are you? Hi, Mario. How are you today? And I also have uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Mohsen, sorry, Mohsen Asli Zain. That, did I say it right? Yes, correct. correct. Hello, Mario. Mohsen, how are you? Mohsen, uh, hello, how are you? Today we yeah. have uh, again um, multi country, multinational broadcast. We have three countries, three different time zones. We've got Dr. Florian Congoli in Montreal, right? What's the temperature there, Dr. Florian? Uh, about 17 degrees, so 16, 17. Yes, a little yes, colder than here in Rio de Janeiro, uh, 20 degrees. And uh, what about in Colorado, where Dr. Zaim is? Yeah, it is It is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. Very good. And in Virginia, Professor uh, Dr. Hustemeyer, what is the temperature there? Yeah, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think puts about 21 Celsius. To anyone. So everybody about uh, a five degree Celsius, a difference between the hottest and coldest spot. Yes, we, we're in the middle of the, uh, in between seasons. So uh, mid seasons are usually, it's going to be very soon. It's going to be spring in the Southern hemisphere and autumn fall oh. in the Northern hemisphere. Two continents, well, three countries, two continents, yes, three countries, two same continents, two hemispheres. Yes. <laughs> two hemispheres. And, well, two I, I like this. Three countries, same temperature. <laughs> very good. Well, uh, today we have, we have a, a, a very interesting uh, broadcast. We are talking today about uh, the Horstemeyer International Symposium on Multiscale Material Mechanics and Sustainable Applications. And our guests today, they are, uh, they are very connected to this. And one names the, the symposium, Professor Horstemeyer, Dr. Horstemeyer. And the other co-chair is it, Professor Dr. Zaim. And I would like first to, to uh, both are engineers. So honoring engineers, I'd like to show a, a quick video. Uh, Dr. Florian is also an engineer. So I'm the only non-engineer here. I'm a journalist. But uh, let's start talking about why engineers and SIPs are so linked, so connected. Flogged meetings are unique in the sense that they combine science, engineering and fun. Here they talk science, they talk engineering, they talk technology. And indeed the very relations between the science, the engineers and the politicians. That is a framework which is absolutely essential. It's very important for me to understand how interact, let's say, the science with the sustainability and the social responsibility. I meet a lot of people normally not used to meet. It should be nice to actually meet them and have a discussion longer with them. And when you bring people together with different backgrounds and different interests, you create new technology and directions, and that's very important. It's been an interesting conference in which we had met, met and had interesting discussions. We've had some excellent discussions, talk about things that need to happen, things that clients need that we have not done yet. There's some very positive developments going to come from the people that are here working together. It has been very, very useful in establishing very successful collaborations that we have had. This, in my opinion, is very unique. Very good uh, results. Uh, I'm really excited and very happy to be here present. More engineers are present at this conference. We have so many problems in the world and engineers finally need some recognition that they are only possible to solve problems and that also the industry becomes aware about that, that some business models will not work in the future anymore. So you can see how uh, different companies not only incorporate in their vision the sustainability of a guide. It, I think it always helps uh, to, to get new views of everything. Uh, being a manager is really about building strong teams and this is what you do here. This is team working, this is connecting. Until the chance you can work together. Wow, wonderful. If it's not, 
still you'll be able to learn more than network with the people from different industries. It is it's this tremendous reward. The topic of this type allows us to expose our effort to other engineers for criticism, for suggestion, for improvement. So it's a continuous scientific process that can, in my opinion, can only be done in any case can be best done by a summit such as one organized by, by this magnificent conference. That's it. This is SIP's uh, Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition, Sustainability Through Science and Exhibition, from the 27th of November to the 1st of December in Phuket, uh, Thailand. And I would like to start talking with Dr. Florian about it. Dr. Florian, sustainability through science and technology. Engineers play a fundamental role in this, don't they? Yes, uh, that's correct. And uh, if you see here, we are uh, three uh, engineers here. Uh, Professor Hostemeyer started an engineer in Sandia Laboratory. Uh, and uh, also uh, Professor Mohsen is also an engineer. I am also an engineer. And this is, uh, this is a beauty of this, of, this, um, of this SIPS of Science number 12. We are three engineers from various parts of the world. And uh, we are strong, strong on it. Sure, engineering is not an isolated field. Uh, we are more than, much more than engineers. So, Professor Hostemeyer went from uh, from uh, leader in engineering at Sandia Lab to uh, uh, to um, academic life, but still he still is an engineer. Professor uh, Mohsen also same thing. Uh, so he is in uh, he's a professor now, but he is a fundamental in the, an engineer, and uh, engineering is part of uh, of uh, of one of the uh, sustainability pillars which enters at the science and technology. So again, SIPS is a 360 degree, uh, is a 360 degree summit covering uh, every aspect of life. So, uh, and this is based on Flogan sustainability framework. Uh, if if I uh, if I re uh, recap a little bit. So there are three criteria of sustainability. Three uh, is um, protection of environment, is economic growth, we shouldn't forget that, and also is social development, social advancement. So to be sustainable is to achieve simultaneously these three criteria, social advancement, economic protection, uh, economic, uh, environmental protection, and uh, economic growth. If you forget one of those, you are not sustainable. So if you uh, if you are only environmental protection, you forget uh, you forget um, economic growth, or you forget social social advancement, social development, you are not sustainable. And also vice versa. If you if you just take care of uh, of um, um, you know economic development, economic growth forget environment and forget social development, you are not sustainable. And also if you take care only of social society, society development, forget environment, forget um, e economic growth, you are not sustainable. So you have to achieve them simultaneously. Now, uh, the, the concept of uh, Flogan's sustainability framework came because of the confusion encountering in any definition of sustainability. Everybody around the world was putting at the sustainability definition anything they, they hold dear. So cultural things, uh, uh, indigenous people rights, you know, government, all these are, are valid, uh, I mean, are good causes. The issue is they created a, a misconception about sustainability. The, the definition became so cumbersome, nobody was able to uh, uh, to differentiate, so they were putting pears and uh, and apples in the same basket, and they were not were not able to to differentiate things. So that's why we created the Flogan Sustainability Framework, where we divide the criteria, where you just you just saw the three criteria to be achieved simultaneously. But uh, what are the actors or the pillars which can hinder or achieve sustainability? For us, there are three science and technology, governance and management, and education and civil society. Uh, it's a table of three pillars. Any of the pillars goes down, 
the whole structure uh, uh, disappears. So uh, the three the three uh, are equally important. The three pillars are equally important. Science and technology. Here we have we have uh, for, uh, Professor Ostermeyer and uh, Professor Zaim both working in science and technology. So they are uh, they have. Uh, an engineering degree and they are working on the research basically science and technology is what brings us we there are three equal important uh, pillars but there is an order of precedent we have to start with science and technology because science and technology offers solutions there is no government in the world that can can by decree or by any decision can say okay let's protect the environment without having the tools tools and the means are offered by science and technology Sure, there are some organization issues that government can deal with, like save a little bit of water, save a little bit of this, increase the taxes. But the impact of this, they do not go so near that science and technology. So the science and technology offer the solution, and the, the role of government becomes much easier if we have solution from science and technology. So the pillar of science and technology is so strong, even at this at this life. We have uh, science and technology. I'm a science and uh, engineer. Uh, Professor Osamayer, science engineer. Professor Zaim is science, a scientist and engineer. So we want, we have one of the pillars covered here already. However, it's not just that. You know, um, uh, I mentioned the other pillar is government, government uh, and uh, and management. Government, government, as I said, is very important here. We we also were we have a government covered in some somehow. Professor Zaim is the is a program director of, of National Science Foundation in the US, one of the biggest, actually uh, currently the biggest uh, uh, fundamental science uh, uh, funding uh, in the world. So basically he's covered one part of the government, but also his management. Management. Professor Ostermeyer, he is an engineer, he is an academic also, he is, he is the founder of many, uh, many uh, you know, private companies. So uh, you, if you are a founder, you have to manage the company and you have to manage it sustainably. So we have the uh, the pillar of government, government, governance, and and uh, and management covered, and education and civil society. Professor Samir is, is a professor in university. Professor Zaim is a professor in university. We have to prepare the future generation in science and technology in order to be sustainable. So the three pillars of sustainability are covered here uh, from us here, and uh, and that's 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 six. So I mentioned 360 degrees. We start from geology, mining, processing, mineral processing, uh, you know, um, um, extraction, refining, advanced materials, nanomaterials, uh, nanotechnologies, um, you know, technologies in medicine. We have a law symposium dedicated to the famous uh, Washington DC lawyer. Uh, we have, uh, you name it, we have a 360 degree. And this is intentional. And this is unique in the world. Why? Because uh, uh, we need all this for uh, in in our life, and we have uh, historically we have uh, the science has been divided in various aspects, in various divisions, in various you know fields because of ignorance. Actually, science is one. There is no there is SIPS uh, is bringing them together. It's bringing them uh, under one roof in order to increase the synergy, to increase the synergy between different fields of science. So we are here at uh, multi-scale materials modeling. So this is. Basically, it's not a field of science. Basically, this is a, a, a method, and and this is another example. This method can be applied everywhere in all of these fields I mentioned, in all these 360 degrees of science. And many people do not know that. So uh, that's why we have a specific symposium dedicated to Professor Ostermeyer that uh, that is dealing exactly on this. People do not know exactly that this is this is a method applicable everywhere, and this is the beauty of this. Uh, so it's applicable. Uh, Professor Samara has worked on Sandia Lab in uh, in nuclear engineering, in, 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 in nuclear science, nuclear engineer, and security. So these are all part of life. Imagine like this: we do not think this way because we live on Earth. If you send an astronaut through NASA or through private companies now in, in a different planet. Or in in, in uh, you know you have to think about all this from minerals to modeling to uh, extraction to lab uh, of minerals to legal aspects to health aspects you name it so that's that's the purpose of SIPS everything under one roof there are 50 
and the deep science symposia very specific in one roof what is the spine of all this is sustainability so all the the other symposia are like vertebra around this spine so this is this is the, the entire concept and that's why we have Hostemeyer International Symposium on multi-scale materials not only that is applicable in all these fields and it will be very interesting for all this this symposia to, to uh, uh, interact to interact and create synergy and that's why in SIPS every year we have uh, origin is SIPS is originator and established on various multi-dimensional multi-field and multi-country uh, cooperation project because there are people coming from 80 countries and all disciplines of science and uh, that the best place in a best environment one of the best in the world we choose it intentionally so that's it as a as a to set up the you know the background of all this uh, live and uh, probably now we should uh, should uh, leave the word to the star of the of the event uh, professor hostemeyer uh, explain yeah. why this yeah. is important why this this is this is uh, this is so important for the society uh, in order other scientists from other fields understand, but also general public, because this is for general public. So basically, my, uh, Mario, you should have asked this. I, I got your question. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you well, translate it in a different terms. No, it's okay. Uh, well, as you said, uh, this uh, symposium is named after him, and I would like to... to uh before listening to professor hostemeyer to congratulate you because uh you've you you've known uh, very recently you've just known that you've been awarded uh uh, uh I, I i'm going to get the name of the albert sovier uh, of the a uh, medal of the american uh, the ams international is that ASM, correct asm asm that's it ASM very good so just two days ago, all, not recently, just two days ago. Two days ago, right? So two days congratulations. Ago. I mean, yes. uh, we have to add that to your long biography. And <laughs> talking about this, if you want, if you, you're watching us and you want to know Professor Hostemeyer's biography, just in the description here, there is a link to his biography and also Professor uh, Zaim's biography. Yes, so... Uh, let's go straight to the point and listen to Professor Hostemeyer. Good afternoon for you, right? Thank you. Thank you, Mario. And, and Florian, thank you for that introduction. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's excellent context for really my life. Um, you know, I, uh, when v Theodor von Karman said science is the study of what exists, but engineering is a creation of what never was, there's two distinct processes mm -hmm. where the scientific method of making a observation and a hypothesis and doing experiments for a theory more for a law is one process but the engineering process is design analysis procurement logistics assembly performance sustainability and death and recycling and design for each of those so in the design and analysis is where um, my world started really at sandia labs in 1990 when we were not allowed to do underground thermonuclear tests but yet had to have a 10 to the ninth reliability that the bomb's going to go bang when you want it to go bang. And you can't do an experiment. So that's the highest reliability I know of anything man-made of that. And you go from the model and simulation then to the errors, to the uncertainty, then to the probability, then to reliability. Um, and so you have to have very accurate models. And that's where we started started a top-down approach of what the requirements were for the design of the real entity all the way down to electrons. And then we then we ran simulations from electrons to atoms, uh, from atoms to, to dislocation, from dislocations to grains, to the phases, all the way up to the large-scale structures. And then uh, once doing that, we moved it towards cars and automotive, the largest market in the world. And that's when I moved from Sandia Labs to Mississippi State University. And that's when Professor Mohassen uh, and I uh, crossed paths doing this multi-scale modeling. And there I started doing car crash designs for Nissan, the Altima, the Maxima, the Quest van were designed using these methods. Then I started getting involved with uh, developing that for the human because the number one uh, cause of death between age one and 34 is a car crash worldwide and in the United States. 
And I realized cars were designed for dummies, not for humans. And so then we started doing this multi-scale modeling for designs. And that's what even got me recently into uh, sports helmets, uh, football, American football, uh, baseball, uh, hockey, and that sort of thing. And then recently in the last years, as Florian talked about, not only moved it from, from metal alloys to polymers to the biology of the human, but even to the earth and the cosmos, that there's multi-scale structures in the cosmos. And we were able to um, transfer like Hooke's law and the mechanics and materials of that all the way to the general theory of relativity. So it is broad, it is ubiquitous, and very applicable in a very practical way to optimize designs. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Dr. Zain, what should we expect at the International Symposium uh, at SIPS uh, from the 27th of November to the 1st of December in Thailand? Um, so I, I should actually come. So Mark doesn't really uh, is very humble to mention uh, uh -huh. all the things he has done in terms of uh, generating a lot of databases uh, for doing computational materials and computational mechanics, as well as at the same time, generate basically educating and uh, creating platforms for educating the ne next generation of engineering engineers and scientists. So uh, as we already talked about, we, if we look at everywhere, we see materials. Uh, basically, we need materials for different applications and different use. Uh, I would say uh, one of the uh, most relevant ones that we can name is just our phone, right? You compare our phone to what we had like 10 years ago. They're lighter, they're, their battery lasts much longer. If you drop the phones, they don't break easily. So what happens is these just uh, designing new materials. How this design actually the design process comes from where this design process comes from it's just we have a problem we want to solve and then in the engineers solve problems right so uh, i just want to link this to a couple of a very uh, important work that professor horsemere did uh, in uh, in uh, in the area of icme so icme stands for integrated computational materials engineering where you identify a problem a real problem that you would like to solve. It could be uh, a door for a car, for example, as we want to have a lighter door that contributes to the fuel efficiency of a car. At the same time, we want to increase the crash worthiness or the safety of the car. So we identify the problem. Now we want to solve it. We want to make a material that actually give us those particular properties. Also, it is manufacturable. Also, economy uh wise it is uh also low cost so uh professor horsemay actually has two books of icme on icme if uh, if the reviewer uh, basically whomever uh, actually watching this uh want to refer to those uh, those books are basically explaining the fundamentals of how actually we identify problems how we can solve it through multi-scale materials modeling or multi-scale uh uh, me uh, mechanics. So uh, at the same time, when we actually generate the, these uh, computational tools and computational models that are integrated uh, through different lens scales, uh, so we identify a problem at a higher lens scale, then we go back or down on, until we reach the electronic scale, then we come up with the solutions and we uh, uh, come up to the uh, higher lens scale until we get to the uh, problem lens scale. So the ICME, uh, at the same time that we are solving a problem, that we are linked, uh, basically connecting the science and technology, at the same time, we are educating students, we are educating engineers, we are educating scientists to actually, uh, not only we are educating them to uh, learn these particular tools or how to modify them, to actually, um, uh, basically educate the next generation of problem solver, how actually you can prepare yourself to face the next generation of problems, right? Every day we, we come up uh, or we see new problems that we have to solve. And these, uh, these multi-scale materials models mm -hmm. and these uh, multi-scale uh, mechanics models are applicable for many different things as we already talked about. So I expect in this particular, in this symposium, Mark Horsmith symposium, uh, first of all, you will you will see 
people coming from different backgrounds and uh, showcase their latest and newest uh, innovations uh, in, in terms of utilizing and applying or advancing these computational materials tools or computational mechanics tool to address a particular problem or advance the science and uh, technology field. So that is going to be really interesting and amazing, uh, I believe, for uh, for the participants, also the audience uh, and the speakers also in this uh, symposium. So I'm very excited about this symposium. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Hi. Dr. Florian. Uh, I, have a, I have a guest here. Oh, you do? Oh, that's Gobi. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold, yeah. but he cannot go up so much. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, uh, Goldie, go. I think go. it's the first time he's on a broad uh, on a yeah. broadcast. First time he came. He, here he's usually time. around, but not in the uh, behind the cameras. <laughs> none of the videos. Yeah, none of the videos. Yeah. He's usually behind the cameras. Uh, yeah. It's usually his nap time, right? Yeah. When, when you're recording, probably. Uh, he's a very well-behaved uh, uh, dog, also. Uh, well. Before we, we, we keep on, if you're watching, I would like to thank you very much. I would like you to invite you to subscribe to the channels. This is a joint production between TV on the Zoo and Floating Star International. And uh, as we said today, as we usually do on SIPs of Science, we are talking about SIPs, the Sustainable uh, Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition. Yes, that is going to be uh, taking place between the 27th of November and the 1st of December in Phuket, in Thailand. And Dr. Florian, before we go on, I would like you to make a comment about SIPs. But I usually say on our broadcast that that P doesn't stand for processing. It does really stand for paradise. And before we well, go to our... That's, that's intentional. But probably uh, um, if, you, if you can show the Hosemeyer promo video, yeah, that, that's what I was going to do. So uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to show this uh, promo video. And a little uh, before uh, we, we go to the second round, I would like you to explain about why you choose the, the, the venues that you choose. Okay, right. but okay. first, let's take a look at the, the promotional video for the Hostemeyer Symposi International Symposium. That's it. After uh, uh, Professor Zaim's explanation, this video we sure have to to invite everybody that uh, has any connection to the themes that are going to be discussed there. And I would like Dr. Florian to tell us what is the symposium going to be about. What are the 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 topics that are going to be discussed? You've got it yeah. behind you on the the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here is the live uh, website of uh, mm -hmm. our international symposium. This is our, uh, our VIP guest. We have a record of nine Nobel laureates. We have, uh, by the way, we have uh, uh, we have the the former director of National Science Foundation. You know, Professor Zaim is now program director at National Science Foundation. But we have uh, Professor Subra Suresh, uh, former director of National Science Foundation, appointed directly by Professor by uh, President Obama. Uh, today he's uh, rector. Uh, he's uh, president of uh, NTU University in Singapore. He will be coming. We have two American Chemical Society former presidents, 2016, 2020, and we have uh, we have a vice uh, president of European Research Council uh, coming. Uh, so all are here in the website. You have the website. There is a biography of Mark, and also the uh, the chairs. We have Professor Zaim also here. Uh, the chairs are from all over the world, from Greece, from the United States, uh, from uh, uh, from uh, various countries. So, uh, and the topics, there is a link on the topics. On the topics, you can see that you can click here and you have a link to what are the topics to be discussed. But I, what I wanted, uh, all the topics are here. 
looks a little bit theoretical, but as I mentioned, this is applicable in all fields of science, multi multi scale modeling, it, you name it. Uh, Professor Osemeyer explained it explained very very well uh, where the applicability of that method, and um, you know. Um, he has applied in in Sandia lab national laboratories. He has applied in when uh, he is now uh, at the university, and also in his uh, private uh, established companies. Mm -hmm. So in 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 any in many other fields. So although the topics look a little bit you know uh, theoretical, applicability is everywhere. And uh, this is, uh, for example, one of the purpose of the multi-scale modeling is to uh, let's say uh, um, let's take an example that every, everybody can understand if you have a if, if, if you have a tool if you make it lighter you uh, you spend less energy that's uh, that's your help on sustainability if you help it if you increase the uh, uh, the uh, you know the the lifespan you are you contributing to your s sustainability if you uh, increase fatigue like in the airplanes, the fatigue of the airplanes, of the, you, you are contributing to the sustainability. So basically, all this method contribute directly to sustainability. So this is the actual the sixth what it does. It brings together from the very theoretical to very practical and brings uh, bridges the link. And that's uh, that's why people uh, find it very interesting because we create the synergy. So uh, this is this is the uh, you know the. A method applicable everywhere. Even, even uh, Professor Osemar mentioned it is basically the human body in biology. So we have three medical related symposia at CHIPS. We have one on oxidative stress. Uh, we have one uh, modern technologies, new technologies in medicine, and we have COVID uh, symposium uh, in a scientific analysis what went wrong, what should have been done better in terms of technology, in terms of uh, uh, of uh, new treatments. So that's why. So now uh, this particular symposia, they might have an interest on multi-scale scale modeling also. Modern medicine without physics, without mod modeling, multi-scale modeling is nowhere. Everybody has been in hospital, you see. In the hospital, <laughs> You have more, more, uh, you know, instruments than doctors, you know. Well, so, and all, mostly of all these instruments are basic on multi-scale modeling. And sometimes they screw up with modeling and give a wrong results. But the, anyway, generally, it is, <laughs> generally it is an advancement. Uh, it's an advancement curve. So, all the way to understand, you have to fail in order to, to, uh, to pr progress. It's normal part of science. But so we should be careful of screwing of modeling. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's an advancement. So anyway, this is the synergy. This is in the synergy of uh, uh, of of SIPs. So 360 degrees and synergy. You can drop. We can go from one symposium to the other. Okay, mm -hmm. somebody in medicine, a doctor, say, oh, I have some modeling here. I've done some modeling myself. I should go to this to Hosemeyer symposium. See this specifics. How can I use it in medicine? Could be another material scientist that oh. I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm applying this in 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 human body processes and so on. Mm -hmm. You need multi-scale modeling. You have the interaction between organic and inorganic. That's why we say there is no more difference between organic and inorganic chemistry. It's just one. We just divide because of ignorance in the past. We are bringing the SIPs is bringing them together. So this is uh, you know that's why people have to come. You know this is not a theoretical symposium. It is theoretical and practical. But in order to be applicable, you have to start from fundamentals. You have to start from modeling, from grain sizes, from uh, you name it, going to electronic structure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the end of the day, every applicability it is uh, it is helping the society. So all this, even in, in, in the astronaut going to another planet, hopefully soon, uh, you know where we've been in Moon anyway, but they are going back again. So these are these are part of life. An astronaut has to take care of you name it every single thing himself as a human being and that's it so uh you mentioned about uh, p the paradise yes well, that's, uh, that's intentional it's not by 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 uh you know uh, uh by hazard or what was the idea about this you know science and especially the engineers 
um, normally are those that develop the society, but they do not get the credit. SIPS mm -hmm. uh, is a pioneer on this, to honor scientists and engineers, to give them proper credit. And we have done it since 2003, when we started in San Diego, California, the first SIPS, uh, 2006. Actually, everything, this is based in San Diego, California. 2003, San Diego, California. 2006, San Diego, California. 2011, it was in, well, another one, it was uh, San Diego, California. There are three. The first three is in San Diego, San Diego California. And then we go all over the world now. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's the honoring scientists and engineers is one of the subjects that helps sustainability one. Why? Because all over the world today, number of students that go in science engineering is dropping down. Besides a few countries, China is an example, is an exception, and then we have to think hard of that. So uh, uh, many uh, from young generation they don't need say, they do not see science and engineering as an attractive field. Uh, why? Uh, because they call they call it you know working hard and no credit, and no and no basically no money, not enough money, and that's true. Uh, and then uh, they see uh, uh, movie stars. Uh, you know, TV stars in the five stars hotels enjoying life. And this gives a misconception like uh, being an actor is easy, you, you get money easily. That's not true, but this is a myth. But, uh, you know, the perception in life are important. Uh, so uh, the, the purpose of CIP is to bring science and engineers at the best places around the world, on the beach side at the five star hotel, but we negotiate good prices. All our five star hotels, you pay for a three or four star, uh, and uh, so this is this is the basic of this P. And when you bring people together in the magnificent place, the science, science, um, uh, being being happy and being you know, in in a major in a major beauty, uh, surrounding by 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 beauty, uh, the, uh, the SIPS proves and has uh, has can prove that number of cooperation, new ideas in science, technology, and cooperation projects between different fields of science, uh, they uh, increase a lot. Because you are, you are in, a, in, a, in a very inspiring and atmosphere. And this is also a gift to scientists, engineers, five-star hotel, the best place in the world for an for affordable price. So these are the P's, the, the, the P of SIPs. And that's what, uh, that's what we, uh, we struggle hard to do. You know, it's very important that, uh, you know, uh, in, in science, they say, okay, you have to, it, it's, a, it's a classical example, you have to fail 10 times and to succeed on the level. Uh, one of the why, because you are kind of isolated. If you come to SIPs, the chances are you don't need to fail 10, 10 times, you might fail only five. And the sixth time you succeed because you have all fields of people, you gain your experience Together. in a different field of science. So that's... Uh, that idea, and then you are in a in a, the best places in the world, and you you are inspired. You know, mm -hmm. one of the our attendees, uh, Jean Marie Dupois, Professor Jean Marie Dupois, in an uh, in an interview said, "It's hard to people to to, to 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 convince our colleagues that are not here that we are working. We are in the middle of this beauty, <laughs> and we are working from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night, yeah. because we have every night, we have every single night." We have a dinner and the show. So we people know each other. There is no more giving a lecture, going to the hotel, you don't know what to do. They know each other. They become like a family. They, they, and these bridges, uh, makes mm -hmm. bridges between cultures, between field of science. And it's very easy to, 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 to bring them together and to create multi-dimensional, multi-field uh, and multi-country uh, projects. And also, I remember the politicians from Brazil, uh, João Ricardo, uh, in, the, in the gala, he mentioned, believe me, I've not been in the swimming pool. I've not been in the, in the beach. I've been here all days following all symposiums. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's why uh, this is true. But that's why we're giving, uh, we have a deal of the hotel that up to five days before, five days after, uh, scientists and engineers can have booked the hotel with the same uh, special price because they are coming there. It's, it's a very top class scientific program, but if you want mm -hmm. to have really some free time and enjoyment during every night. But still, during the dinner, people think about science, think about ideas. They say, okay, I use this method for this field. 
another person from another field, they say, oh, this is a good method. I should use it in my in my practice. So this is this is the idea. Uh, so that's why you know we have five days before, five days after. They can save a vacation for a cheap price, the same price. So this is the the magic of P, which also you can show what what I mean. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to show a movie now, and after that, I'm going to ask Professor uh, Hostemeyer and Professor Zaim about this because uh, how this environment. And you're going to see where your uh, the SIPS is going to take place. How can this beautiful place, this paradise, as we call, uh, that's why uh, we are talking about the P. Yes, the P in SIPS is standing for paradise. How this can help uh, this scientific exchange, okay, this exchange of ideas. So let's take a look at Phuket. Well, that's it, SIPS, uh, Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition from the 27th of November to the 1st of December in Phuket. Professor Hostemeyer, uh, over 90% of all scientific uh, uh, works, uh, researches, never come out of academia to the society. Yes, How important is an event like SIPS, where you unite some of the greatest minds in the world, and I include both of you, I mean, the three of you in this event, yes, in this category. How can this help uh, humanity? How can this help uh, society to benefit from the innovation that, I mean, is coming up faster and faster? Yeah. Um, you know, I agree with Florian. Uh, one time I was at a uh, conference in Mexico on the beach, and I literally for seven days never left the hotel. And I might as well have been a hotel in my hometown here across the street because uh, of the meetings from morning to night. But when you can get out, and my wife is coming and we are spending the five days after and the five days before, it helps break your mindset out of your normal behavior, out of your mindset that you're living in day in and day out. And even in that physical environment there, you experience something new and different. And because of that experience new and different, you're sort of open to new ideas. You're sort of open to kind of hearing different perspectives. And particularly the last SIPS one I went to, uh, I listened to some of the Nobel Prize winners and I ended up meeting and talking with them afterwards. It broadened my perspective on even my own work. And we had some synergisms, uh, particularly with uh, Daniel Schechtman, um, on material modeling and some of the, mat the materials that, that he talked about. So, so it's, it's a challenge in your brain. It's to get out of the natural ruts. And so, so to be able to do that, to expand and be more creative and how to help uh, solutions. I think Einstein said it best when he said Mach's problem in science was that he was limiting his brain to just in this one narrow area. And it, it took another level of thinking to run out and see the greatest impact to that. And I think that's what these, that these, were, um, these meetings are about. Uh, Professor Zain? Yes, fo following up with Mark, it's, uh, leaving the current uh, job or work you have, for example, as a professor, as a scientist in a national lab or industry, and come, come to, a uh, to a conference like SIPS, uh, basically, it provides a venue for you to open your minds about different ways of uh, solving the same problem or actually seeing other problems that you can apply your 
techniques and knowledge to. So it, it, it probably is a venue for collaborations. And as you mentioned, uh, Mario, that uh, yes, 90% of uh, academy uh, research and projects may not actually be realized in industries or uh, become actual products. But I think conferences like this, which actually uh, provides a venue for industries, national labs, academia to get together, this is one of the ways to show the progress at different fronts, how they can actually meet and work together. At the same time, it is going to be an educational uh, venue as well. It's just uh, for everyone, for me, for example, coming and seeing the models, tools, and algorithms uh, that I have been working on, what other applications they may have, or how I can find collaborators uh, or to work closely with industries to transfer this technology, which we call it technology transfer uh, in universities that we have technology transfer offices. So this is very critical actually to provide, for example, what SIPS is going to provide is to connect basically academic research to national lab research to industry perspective and their capabilities to connect these together to uh, solve the current problems uh, that we have, societal problems and other things, as well as actually future and forthcoming problems that we need to uh, forecast and have plans to solve those. So uh, yes, I am very excited about this venue. I, I think it will provide this venue for uh, integrating and, colla and collaboration between different fronts from industries uh, and uh, academia and national labs. Uh, Dr. Florian, uh, as of uh, the Horstemeyer uh, International Symposium and other symposiums at SIPS, we are th four months away, three months away, right? Yeah, two and a half months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, if I'm watching this, imagine I'm a scientist, I, I do uh, research that is uh, that has a relation to this or another symposium do i still have time to to subscribe my work yeah sure uh, sure how do, uh, sure. Uh, what do you suggest tell, tell us about it well first of all this is not an invitee only uh, uh summit it's open to everyone everyone that feels uh that he needs to communicate to present something to their colleagues uh any discovery any um, any development, any new technology, any new methods, any new mathematical method, physical method with application, any, you name it, any. So we are open and we do not take sides between it. We are a political, we don't take sides um, in, in technology debates. We welcome everyone. Uh, a paper could be also, also a list of failure. Uh, knowing list of failure is good because the others will not even uh, reproduce those failures. So this is very important in science. So uh, uh, there is no shame uh, to fail in science. Actually, uh, it's not called failure. It is learning. It is learning, <laughs> learning from uh, uh, from the you know uh, from the um, from mishaps and so on. So it is it's a natural it's a natural process. So we are still accepting abstracts uh, for a limited time. You're free. You don't need an invitation. If you need an invitation, we can provide an invitation. Mm -hmm. But you are free to choose. Uh, you, you go in the website. You see any modeling you have done in your life. You feel, oh, uh, this is good to, to present at this uh, forum. It might be very good. It will attract people from all different sciences. We'll see my my modeling technique. You are welcome. Uh, so you need to, you just go in the website, uh, submit an abstract. It's just half page. It takes about one minute. Uh, it's it's very easy. And then uh, you follow the process. It's automatic. You receive uh, automatic uh, acknowledgement of receipts. Uh, then it goes to a, to a process of uh, accepting, and then uh, papers to publish the paper, which is peer reviewed. And then it's, it will be a, a volume. Hostemeyer um, uh, International Symposium on the multi-scale uh, materials modeling, and uh, the best papers can be uh, selected to with uh, proper updates and modification to make it like new uh, they can uh, they will be published in a relevant journal as a special number we have to determine the journal we have determined uh, uh, this but this is after after the symposium so this is the, like a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of the procedure how how it goes all are peer reviewed all papers are in google scholar uh, if you go in google scholar and search 
sustainable international, a sustainable uh, industrial process in Samik, you're going to find about 3,500 uh, abstracts. Uh, since we started in 2003, all are searchable in Google Scholar, uh, so uh, which is a major technique in the world. Uh, and, uh, actually, Google has Google Scholar. It's, it's a it's a scholar part of Google. So that's uh, it's a it's a great exposure. But at the end of the day, you mentioned 95% of paper. Actually, it's more than that. 99% of academic paper stay in the in the shelves of academic journals. Uh, why? There are uh, some reasons for that because, you know, first of all, they are being published uh, a specific in at a specific journals. So if I have a if I have a technology or a modeling, I I choose a journal that is just for my field, and there is a there is a, a good reason for that because it has to be evaluated by your peers in order to determine your your what you are bringing new. That's fine, but it is a very important ex, uh, aspect missing. You are missing, you know, the publicity. The uh, you are missing the um, discoverability in all in other field of science. So by by okay, you 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 get published in a in a high in high impact journal that stays in the in the in, in the library. But people from other fields of science, there is very difficult to understand what you're doing. Sometimes there are the articles are so specific in language that nobody outside that field can understand and we are have a big experience on this so take some especially in some uh, some uh, you know uh, um, self-propagating uh, techniques uh, in the metal processing there are some theoretical papers that uh, many people cannot understand there are uh, Publication in medicine. They I'm going so to include myself in that category. Yes, they are so good. While are speaking scientists to scientists, imagine the journalists. So uh, it's a very uh, the, the, there is no capacity of bringing uh, the, the 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 concepts out of this uh, of this uh, you know a deep scientific fields that the terms are used in such. You should use the terms in a scientific paper, but you should make it understandable to a most general that's why SIPs especially uh, plenary lectures are has that idea not so deep deep each symposium we have 50 symposium you can go as deep as you want but you have to have an aspect to make it visible to the to the, to the society and not only society to different fields of science different mm -hmm. fields of, so exactly. this is basically lacking um, you name it. In, in, in I was actually were together in in uh, in Orlando in an American Chemical Society uh, yes, conference. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so in 2016, I guess 2018. Uh, I, I, I went in 2019. 2019. 2019. 2019. 2019. Yeah. So there was a big discovery, and mm -hmm. the American Chemical Society chose the scientists to put in a uh, in a press conference. So there were many, many journalists. I was there. The, the, the discovery was very good, but the quality of his explanation to journalists, he was in the podium, was horrible. Nobody understood what the hell he had done. I'm going to be very honest. It's so good to hear you say that because I felt I was like the most <laughs> stupid person in the world because they didn't understand anything. Oh, it was for I said, I'm not I'm going to say anything because oh, really yeah. me. so the guy was not I able remember that. To, to explain to people what the hell he has done. It was a very good discovery. And you got a ton out of my shoulders because I really I had that impression. I've had that impression for three years. You made so me feel so much better. Basically, I told the, the guys, and they said, you know what? Uh -huh. Make a press, write something. I'm going to uh -huh. help you write something to understand what the hell are you saying? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this is a big, uh, that's what I'm saying. Being isolated is different things. And Steve gives you this exposure between science. And basically, if you, if you follow SIPS, I guess many papers will see the light of discovery, light of application, mm -hmm. much, much faster and much faster. It'll not be only in the in the in the selves. But this this is reality of life. You you are used with that those words. You are always in the lab. You cannot speak differently. Exactly. And Einstein had a, since Professor Ostermeyer and Professor Zaim also 
uh, followed on that. But Einstein used to say, if you are not able to explain to a five years old child, you do not understand it yourself. Very now, Doctor no. Florin, you mentioned a five-year-old child. I would like to ask. Uh, we are, we are getting close to the end of our our show tonight, but I would like to ask uh, Professor Hostemeyer and Professor Zain to make a comment. To imagine a teenager is watching us, and he's thinking: Should I be a scientist? Should I be an engineer? As Doctor Florian said, less and less uh, teens. Uh, uh, are are considering going becoming scientists becoming engineers uh what would you tell them that would help them change the mind and see i can have a good life a happy life a productive life and a successful profession choosing science and of course if they have a talent for this we always up to the talent. yeah so i have a brother that's a medical mm -hmm. doctor i have a brother that's that's a lawyer got his doctorate in jurisprudence and to this day, they both wish they went down the road of science and engineering instead of becoming a medical doctor and a lawyer. Although they make a lot of money in the medical field and law field, they're basically bored in what they do. And the challenges that come up every day in engineering and science may challenge the brain to new levels to deeper ways of thinking, to broader experiences in trying to understand nature, to try to understand uh, technologies. And so to, so I didn't know what engineering was when I, when I went into college. I only did it because my dad said, you're good in math and science. But when you talk about the process of creating something, I used to say I'm the, I'm the least creative human God ever made. But then I, I started understanding the process of thinking related to it and getting that process down and understanding it. And it's been exciting. It's been a very exciting life. Just recently, by the way, the, the helmet that Tom Cruise wore on Top Gun Maverick, that helmet, the Army said, the military said, can you take 40, can you just get 40 Gs less on the human related to that? So we did multi-scale modeling of the brain, of the skull, of the head, of the foam liner, and we redesigned it. And the military, we, we said, you're going to have a 40%. You're going to make that 40%. In fact, you can get 43% less load on the human brain. And, and, and the military said, well, are you going to test this? And we said, no, you're going to, you're going to test it. We're just doing the modeling. I said, well, do you trust your modeling? And what, and again, this modeling went from bombs to cars to all these different things. And, and the guy drops the test, does the drop tower. We predicted 43% better. It was 42% better. And his answer was, wow, let's do that again. That can't be right. Dropped it again, 43% better. So it's a pretty exciting world we're in. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Professor Zain. Yes, exactly. Follow up with Mark. Uh, if I want to tell a teenager, if you want to reach a star, it's become an engineer because you never get bored. Uh, when you even that shows when you come to a university as a as a mechanical engineer or as an electrical engineer, uh, as a metallurgist, uh, there are lots of different things that you can control and you can change you can uh, while you're actually pursuing a career you can go from different uh, subjects to another subject I'll give you an example of one of my very close friends that started as a mechanical engineer and uh, worked for uh, for an aerospace uh, engineering company for a few years actually seven eight years after that i say all right let's uh, can i apply the similar knowledge i have and learn some new things and go to another uh, uh, particular area and he went to uh, biomedical, uh, basically, research. So after a few years of that, now he's working on uh, basically semiconductors in different industries. I mean, you're never going to get bored because the skills and the way of thinking, actually, you yeah. will be educated with yeah. is that you can become a problem solver. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that what the problem is because you are uh, going to get the education and the knowledge 
and just the brow thinking that you can actually attack any any complex problems in any direction so you never get bored so mark already mentioned that it. it's just it's a very exciting area of uh, uh to pursue and this is why uh, why for example i always say if you want to become a nasa uh engineer or you want to work for a spacex or these companies that you know that they are on the frontier of science and engineering and technology you basically need to go after uh basically get, getting a degree in engineering. Uh, so that's that's a great part of being a professor in the university is that, yes, we do uh, work on research projects and other things, but we also see actually the education of uh, uh, students at different levels. So we have students at undergraduate levels, we have students at graduate level, we have postdocs, and they're all actually going to go back to to the society, to different industries that they're going to apply their knowledge. And they have the tools and uh, and the necessary knowledge to make changes whenever they want, because it's not going to be just one line of work or one line of research can be applied to different uh, disciplines. Uh, and I, I think Mark already mentioned, it's just going to be very exciting to work in engineering and science, science areas. Well, fantastic. Before we go to our final considerations, yeah, I'd like yeah, to say, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, 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 Dr. Florian, go ahead, go no, ahead. It's okay, it's okay. Well, I wanted to build a little bit on uh, Professor Zaim and, my, and Mark yes. also before, so just just to follow the trajectory. Uh, it's an exciting field, but uh, it's it's one of the uh, you know one of the aspects that uh, we have to, to 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 also to mention. I remember uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure which conference was that. Uh, one of the spouses of one of the uh, famous uh, professor. Uh, uh, she, we, we're, we are in the same table and we're, we are making jokes. But at one, at one point, she said to me, oh, science in science, the issue is that scientists are boring. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and her husband was a scientist. A scientist, that's a big name. Yeah, that's actually. great. <laughs> that so, wasn't a good compliment. Uh, to, to well, she, she told to me. She didn't, uh -huh. He didn't hear. She told me. Well, you mentioned about P. Why this comes? Because, you know, the concept of scientists, they work like mm -hmm. horses because it's very interesting. You don't get bored, but mm -hmm. you get a credit like mouses from the society. We respect each other, but we are in a bubble. We respect a lot. But at the end of the day, you have only two weeks. You don't go in five star hotels. You don't, you, the society doesn't respect you. That's tips. That's why we choose the peace, the best place in the world where you can come with your wives and enjoy. And any anybody that comes with tips, always who come with family, who come with wives, they enjoy. They enjoy. Yeah. Some of them they yeah. stay in the technical session, not supposed to, because they're supposed to stay in the beach. No, they come there. You name it. So they have a good time. And then, then that lady will not say anymore. Scientists are boring. Uh -huh. Well, that's, th th that's correct. I'm going to show uh, another video here and then we go to our final considerations. Well, this is it, SIP Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition from the 27th of November to the 1st of December at the Phuket Hilton Arcadia in Phuket, Thailand. Uh, well, Professor Hostemeyer, thank you very much for your participation, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person in Thailand. Yeah, me too. Me too, Mario. Thank you. Uh, Professor Zaim, thank you very much for uh, being with us tonight and see you in, in Thailand. Thank you, Mario. And Dr. Florian, I'll see you next week. Yes, for <laughs> one more <laughs> sip of science. Uh, before I just uh, mention something to, to finalize it. Uh, you know, 
we have, uh, when I mentioned government, we have many government, you know, not only politicians, but also government, uh, the institutions that come because, you know, government have to choose between different technologies. Uh, for example, uh, also, uh, you know, government funding institute like National Science Foundation or any, uh, they need to know what is going on in the world to make the right decision. They need to know all fields of science because they're not finding funding only only in field of, uh, field of science. And then we have many uh, coming probably uh, ORN, ORNG. Sometimes we have uh, we are sponsored by them. They participate. ORNG is uh, Office of Naval Research in the United States, mm -hmm. by the way. Global. They have a global sector. So they um, sometimes they sponsor us, sometimes they participate because they need to know in order to, 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 to suggest to the government the best technology, the best this and best this, best this. And to have all this field together makes their life uh, much easier. And, uh, uh, you know, the, um, uh, this, is, uh, this is one thing, one point that I forgot to mention. And the other, the other point is this, uh, you know, uh, to make... Um, you know, that's why when I said that scientists are boring, actually they are not. It's a misconception. It is a myth. It's a perception. But perceptions are important. They are the whole, the entire class of politicians work on perception. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't like it, but it is like this, what it is. So, we have a, we have a special program, and as probably you know, we, can, we have artists of science. Mm -hmm. which we 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 have one in one conversation with different scientists we will have with professor Osemeyer in Phuket and with professor uh, Zaim if you are there so we're going to do a we're going to have you a part of this program very one, good one 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 purpose one goal of this program is to show that scientists are humor are funny are human <laughs> beings and you have a misconception about science and Dr. Florian, just to add up to what you're saying, you usually say that when you mix art and science, and of course, when you have an artist that scientists are, they are mixing art and science. One plus one can be anything, not only two, five, right? Five. Makes this five, is the, ten, This whatever. is the motto of art and science. This is another program we have, art of science, uh, mm -hmm. where we say that one plus one makes five if one is science and one is art. So exactly. we have a new mathematics, but uh, the, you know that's this, this, this the idea. So this is a different program, art of science. This is artist of science, and there we have many. We have about uh, thirty uh, in our website. We have thirty, uh, you know, uh, conversations. Maybe with more. Scientists. Maybe around forty. Yeah, or 50. I don't remember. Yeah. And we are still editing more because we have. Yeah. Uh, Whenever we you are, travel, we have a. Yeah. It's, it's yes, not a, a regular show. Yeah. Whenever you travel. And we have also, uh, you know, Subhas Suresh. It's one of them. It, he, he used to be the Good. director of uh, National Science Foundation for four years. He is there. He is. Uh, but we are focusing on the human part, science and exactly. human as, a, as scientists as a human. Professor so here we have, Suresh, I was here with we have, I guarantee him. you saw right, Mark okay. and you saw Zaim. They are not boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're great. It was very fun. Very to you. Thank you very boring. much. Thank you. Yeah. And it, it, it's good. Uh, th this show is good because we, we, we show not only scientists, but uh, regular people like me. Yes. Uh, I mean, you guys are the geniuses. I'm just a regular guy, a journalist. Wow. And when, when, uh, That's what, what I think about scientists. What I th find good about SIPS is that it's almost like science is translated to the regular person. And this is very important. So I would like to thank you very much on the, with this opportunity. And as I said, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys uh, in Phuket. See you. Everybody, thank, thank you. you very much for your viewing. And don't forget to subscribe to the channels and to leave your like on the video, leave a comment and share with any friends that might have a special interest in sustainability, science, technology, engineering, and I mean, a better world. I'm Mario Linares. I'm broadcasting from Rio de Janeiro, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.